today I'm going to talk about peptic ulcer disease. For epidemiology, the incidence is around 100 out of 100,000 per year. 68% of the patients are more than 60 years old, and the overall mortality is 7 to 10%. The pathogenesis of peptic ulcer disease, it happens due to an imbalance between the mucosal protective mechanism against the gastric acid and the aggressive forces that damage the gastric mucosa. So for protective mechanisms, there are a few of them which are mucus secretion, bicarbonate secretion, epithelial regenerative capacity, and the prostaglandin secretion by the mucosa. Whereas for aggressive forces that damage the gastric mucosa are gastric activity and pepsin activity. So when there is imbalance, where the aggressive forces are higher than the protective mechanisms, there will be damage to the gastric mucosa and therefore causing peptic ulcer. <coughs> so for the causes of peptic ulcer disease, there is Helicobacter pylori infection. It is a type of bacteria and there is a picture of it here. So this H. pylori will cause a local inflammatory reaction and it secretes enzymes that break down the gastric mucosal barrier. It also enhances the gastric acid secretion and decreases the bicarbonate production. Whereas for NSAIDs like aspirin or Panadol, it impairs the mucosal prostaglandin production through non-selective COX inhibition. So it inhibits the prostaglandin production and prostaglandins are very important for mucosal bicarbonate and mucin production. And prostaglandin also inhibits the gastric acid secretion as well as maintaining the mucosal blood flow to prevent ulcers. So when NSAIDs impair the production of prostaglandin, there will be decreased production of bicarbonate and increased production of gastric acid. So it will cause an imbalance, like I mentioned before. And other causes of peptic ulcer disease are cigarette smoking as well as alcohol. So the clinical presentation of peptic ulcer disease, sometimes they are accidentally detected on OGDS or sometimes the patient present with symptoms of dyspepsia. There are a few types of dyspepsia, for example, ulcer-like dyspepsia, where there is pain in the upper abdomen. Or second type is dysmortality-like dyspepsia, where there is non-painful but discomfort in the upper abdomen, associated with abdominal fullness or nausea. And the third presentation is bleeding, where the patient present with hematemesis, which means vomiting with blood, where there is coffee ground vomitus, or melina, which is very black stool, where there is blood in the stool. So the last presentation is abdominal perforation, which causing abdominal pain. So the patient will present with sudden generalized abdominal pain that is aggravated by even the smallest movements. And there will also be like be board-like rigidity and guarding on the abdomen, which are signs of peritonism. And if an erect chest x-ray is done, there will be air under diaphragm seen for perforated peptic ulcer. For investigation of peptic ulcer disease, you can do OGDS, which is esophageal gastroduodenoscopy. I've shown in this picture here, so they enter this endoscope and reaches into your stomach. So OGDS can be done for diagnosis purpose to confirm that there is an ulcer, to look at the location of ulcer, to do biopsy, to rule out malignancy, where usually the surgeon will do six bites for biopsy. And also biopsy for the enteral tissue for campylobacter-like organism to test for H. pylori. So the second purpose of OGDS is for prognostication of bleeding using the forest grading. So this is the forest grading divided into 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 2C, and 3. So the surgeon will look at 
the ulcer and grade using this forest grading. And then after grading, we can look at the bleeding risk. For example, if it is graded 1A, they will be spurting because spurting of blood because the at, it is of arterial source. So the bleeding risk will be 90%. And the third purpose of OGDS is endotherapy, which is treatment for the bleeding peptic ulcer. So there are three ways, which are injection with adrenaline, hemostatic clipping by using endoclip, and also argon plasma coagulation. So normally we use two out of the three. Uh, normally use hemostatic clipping and argon plasma coagulation together. So for conservative management of peptic ulcer disease, the first one is gastrol protection to enhance the protective mechanisms by giving proton pump inhibitor, for example, pentoprazole. So a standard dose is giving intravenous pentoprazole, 80 mg as starting dose, followed by 8 mg per hour infusion. So the second management is H. pylori eradication, if there is. H. pylori infection, causing the peptic ulcer disease. So the first line triple therapy is by giving these three drugs, which is omeprazole, amoxicillin, and clarithromycin for seven days. So for follow-up, the patient is to come for follow-up for re-scope, so do the OGDS again, after six weeks to document the ulcer healing. And if the ulcer is still present, we will do biopsy on the ulcer again to exclude malignancy for gastric ulcer. And also do biopsy for Campylobacter-like organism again to confirm whether the H. pylori is fully eradicated. Make sure there is no more H. pylori present. Okay, so that's all for my video. Thank you.